What is going on guys? Welcome to Greggles TV Daily Rewind. This is where we go back a week and go through all of the tech news stories that I released in the previous week. And if you want to know anything about the Galaxy S10, S Lite, uh, S10 Plus, whatever it is about Galaxy phones, this is the show that you want to watch. That's all I'm going to say. Guys, tell them in the comments what they're getting into because you know if you want to know anything about Samsung, especially Greggles TV is going to give it to you. Guys, don't forget, I also have t-shirts and new hoodies in the link down below. Watch the show. Enjoy. Let's get into the news. Now, I'm going to give you guys a quick update about where your Android Pie build is for your Samsung phone, also known as the Samsung one UI. Obviously, we're at the pretty much end of January, and it looks like almost everybody, at least in America, is probably not going to get it until February at this point, even the unlocked versions of the phone. I have the beta version running on my phone, but I still don't have the official update. I know Canada's getting it, I believe, on like February 4th. It's probably gonna run something similar into that. So I would, what my guess would be is that the unlocked phones are going to get it first because they don't have any carrier bloatware or anything on the, like the top layer of their Samsung software. So expect unlocked phones for the Galaxy S9, S9 Plus, and Note 9 to get the Samsung One UI update first. As for people on like T-Mobile, AT&T, Verizon, and Sprint, you're most likely gonna get it uh, maybe in February, Maybe not until March or maybe even April. And the reason being is, again, you have a layer of their own kind of software that has to go through testing and processing through Samsung and themselves as well. So there's going to be a delay. And sometimes that delay is kind of long. So I know I've been responding back to some of you guys saying, hey, probably two or three weeks, maybe four weeks. Just depends. But most likely, I would guess carrier versions of the Samsung One UI software Probably, if I had to put money on it, would be mid-February to mid-March would be my guess. I don't have any super concrete evidence on that, but it's just my guess and the way I've seen things go. So there you go. Anyways, my big one only story of the day comes from Ice Universe, who is a huge leaker, as I talk about all the time. And he put out a leak about the Galaxy S10. And let's see what it says. The tweet says the Galaxy S10 features excellent battery optimization and more advanced cooling structure. Now the Galaxy Note 9 brought with it some very interesting cooling structure as well and really good battery life for a lot of people. For me it was pretty decent. It was probably the best battery life I personally ever got on a Galaxy Note 9. I was getting at most four, four and a half hours of, of screen on time. Now it's kind of settled into 3.30, four hours of battery life uh, on this phone. It looks like when you're gonna get this new phone, especially I know with the Snapdragon 855, which is supposed to bring with it even better battery optimization, plus potentially a bigger battery, at least versus the Galaxy S9 line of phones, and then they say they're gonna optimize the battery software itself, you're probably gonna look at very, definitely similar battery life to what you get in the Galaxy Note 9. I would expect even better at that point maybe 30 minutes, an hour better, maybe even better than that, we don't know. But regardless, this is great news and it's it's fantastic to know that this is going to be in the new Galaxy S10 line of phones, especially when the phones are, prices are jumping from over $1,000 and sometimes you'll almost double that as well for the new line of phones, but we'll see what happens. The phone's going to be launched on February 20th and then the release date rumored is March 8th. And then that's not that far away. That's a little over a month at this point. So let's get into the news. The first story of the day is about Apple FaceTime. They have turned off group FaceTime calls because of a huge privacy bug. Now what that bug does is it allows people to place FaceTime calls to listen to audio from the recipient without even answering the call. Also the bug can even show video in some circumstances, again, without the person even uh, picking up the call. So it allows you to basically to eavesdrop on that person. It's pretty crazy. So they've disabled group FaceTime calls on the server level so that they can't, you know, so this bug doesn't happen anymore, which is good to be able to block it. Uh, a fix for this should be out in about a week. And again, this is group FaceTime calls that are affected. 
And the last story of the day is about the Galaxy S10, like the monster version we're talking about here. The one with 12 gigabytes of RAM and one terabyte of storage. There is all kinds of uh, consistent rumors going on about this phone. 9 to 5 got an anonymous tip from a guy that has um, some prototypes of the Galaxy S10 and he said the 12 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte of storage phone is real. And he also said, and other people have said the same thing, that it's going to come out in limited supply. So if you're gonna want this version, I don't know if it's gonna come out in America or not, or wherever you live, um, but we'll like, it looks like it's gonna be limited quantities of this phone, and it kinda makes sense for it being limited quantities because it's so premium, those specs, 12 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte of storage. You're looking at the Galaxy S10 Plus, 512 gigabytes of storage and eight gigabytes of RAM version going to be costing about $1,500 around that price, $1,500. So if you double those specs, more or less a little bit, uh, and then you go price-wise, you're probably looking at $1,750, $2,000, something in that range. And that's extraordinarily high meaning and showing that, you know, it makes, it adds credence to that coming out in limited supply for that version. I I, if it comes out, I have to get it. I mean, it's it's it, it's an extraordinarily amount of everything. It's like overkill of everything. But let's get into the news. The very first carrier in the United States of America has pushed out the Samsung One UI update to the Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus. And it's not Verizon. It's not AT&T, T-Mobile, or Sprint. It's actually Xfinity, which is also known as Comcast. Now, they do piggyback off of the Verizon network, but they're, they're kind of like their own separate carrier at that point. And this is kind of interesting and kind of annoying, I can see, for people that have carried phones, have them be on one of the four major networks. When you see one of these, you know, they're not prepaid, but one of these lesser known carriers out there getting the update before you are. And there's rumors about this update coming out as early as February 4th for people on carriers or maybe even later than that due, due to the extra layer of software that the carriers put on the phone. We're going to have to wait and see, but regardless, this is super, like I said, kind of annoying. If you're on Xfinity slash Comcast and you have the Galaxy S9 or S9 Plus, let us know in the comments down below if you've downloaded the update or not. Next up, the latest rumor about the Galaxy S10 is that it's gone into mass production, meaning that they're actually producing this phone right now, all three of them, the S10 Lite, S10, or S10e, whatever you want to call it, regular S10, and then also the S10 Plus. Now, this is not that surprising when you think of things, because February 20th, which is about, I don't know, more or less 20 plus days away from where we are right now, and that's the official launch of this phone, and then after that, you're probably thinking that pre-orders are going to start that day or maybe within a couple days of that day. And then after that, you're looking at the rumored release date of March 8th, which is just around the corner. It's a little over a month away, so they have to start producing this phone. They're gonna to wanna to create millions of this phone because they're gonna be putting it out worldwide, America, Asia, Middle East, Europe, everywhere that you can think of. So they have to make a lot of these phones. So this is, again, not too surprising, but the rumor of it coming out is, is exciting because we're only moments away from a new Galaxy phone. And the last story of the day is Samsung has officially announced a one terabyte storage unit for mobile phones. Now, why is that, you know, even, it's big news, but I mean, why is it exciting? Because the last couple of rumors we've been hearing about the Galaxy S10 Plus is that it will have a one terabyte of storage and 12 gigabytes of RAM, at least one of the variants of it. And that means that this is pretty much damn near official at this point, that that unit of phone is going to come out. You're probably also gonna see one terabyte phones coming out for Apple and whoever knows who else, whoever uses basically uh, Samsung storage in their phones will have the cap capability to import this storage inside of their phone. And the, the one terabyte of storage is the same exact physical size as the 512 gigabyte variant uh, for the Galaxy Note 9. Also, you're looking at speed increases of 30 8% over the 512 gigabyte version and overall the speed is very equivalent to an SSD in a computer. So we're getting into major increases in 
performance and the ability to do different things on the phone such as uh, natively just always running up to 960 frames per second of video which if you think about it that's ultra slow motion instead of just having five or ten seconds you could literally do it just in normal speed at that point so it's pretty crazy and it's pretty amazing that we're up to this point whereas you know 10 years ago i think the the norm was four gigabytes or eight gigabytes in a phone now you're all the way up to 1000 gigabytes just 10 years later let's get into the news the first story of the day is about one plus six trolling Apple. Now, OnePlus 6 was the number one selling phone in India in 2018. It beat Apple, it beat Samsung, and this is what they said to Apple in an advertisement. You have to love this. So you see the picture of the OnePlus 6 phone and then right below it, hey Siri, which is India's number one premium smartphone? I love that. I love when companies kind of go at each other like that. It just It's good fun and it's good for competition overall and it's good for the consumer to see that there is other phones out there besides iPhone. I know at least in America, it seems like, I mean, I don't know, maybe it's half and half at this point, but it seems like a lot of people have iPhones, especially certain demographics. So I love to see stuff like that. I wish it happened more in America um, with stuff like that. So awesome to you guys, OnePlus, for being the number one selling phone in 2018 in India. And our last stories of the day are kind of similar, and they're about the Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus. As you know, the One UI, also known as Android Pie, has been rolling out officially, not the beta version, but the like official real version has been rolling out all throughout the world. And it's been slow to hit here in America. It hit uh, Xfinity, Comcast uh, the other day. And now it is officially rolling out for Sprint and also for Verizon. Now I know it's rolling out for Sprint because I saw an article about it, but also because one of my viewers tweeted me out. His name is Darnell Coles. You can see here from the screenshot he gave me. The update is really big. It's almost two gigabytes and it's gonna give you security patch January 1st. And also you can see One UI brings you Android Pie with exciting new features and a whole new look and feel based on the feedback from users in Samsung and in Google. And like I said, also, it did come out for Verizon as well, S9 and S9 Plus. Not sure how big their update is, but based off uh, news and articles that are coming out, it came out uh, the, uh, yesterday, it looks like. And now we're just waiting at this point for AT&T, T-Mobile, and also for unlocked versions of this phone like myself. I do not have a current update on T-Mobile uh, or unlocked or AT&T versions. Now I would assume after seeing these updates come out for Verizon and Sprint, I would assume that AT&T and T-Mobile are right around the corner. I would guess at this point, saying, seeing that uh, those versions have already come out, I would guess within the week would be my guess. Could be wrong though, I've been wrong before because it's so tough to see with these updates. But regardless, it should be very, very soon, guys. I know a lot of you guys keep asking me, but uh, I would assume right around the corner at this point. Let's get into the news. The first story of the day is about Samsung One UI, also known as Android Pie. And this is for the United States of America, AKA US of A. And it's about the updates coming out for the different Galaxy phones. Now we've pretty much, well yesterday I announced that the Galaxy Note 9, Android Pie, Samsung One UI update came out for AT&T phones. And also within the last couple of days, Galaxy S9 and S9 Plus updates have come out for Sprint and Verizon. And we're gonna add one more carrier to that S9, S9 Plus update as well. And it is AT&T. So AT&T has released uh, the Samsung One UI update to all of their major Galaxy phones that were released in 2018, the S9, S9 Plus, and the Galaxy Note 9. So that is really good for people that are on AT&T. Um, I assume this is gonna run like a river and T-Mobile and anybody else that hasn't released the update for any Galaxy phone would be next as well so once that stuff happens i will let you guys know but that's the update thus far next up samsung of vietnam released a video showing some future products that they could potentially be releasing one of them they show off is the foldable phone now it's real quick but it shows they're opening up the foldable phone and um, it just looks you know futuristic it looks cool it's something that i think a lot of 
other companies are gonna do. You already, I already saw a lot about it at CES. And again, just looking at some images here that we've been looking at, it's just an interesting, interesting looking product. And I am very excited to get my hands on this in 2019. There's a rumor that this would be announced and shown off at Unpacked 2019, which will be on February 20th, which again, I always say I will be at. And the last story of the day, as you can see right here, is showing off official Galaxy S10 and S10 Plus renders. And I wanna start off with the one that is blowing me away. It is called White Prism. It is an amazing, very, very cool looking color. You can see it's white, but then it looks like it changes colors from everything from purple to blue to pink and you know any kind of pastel looking color. This is the color I'm definitely going to try to get uh, for the S10 Plus. It looks so cool. I definitely want this one. I'm assuming a lot of other people will want it as well. Another big color in here is the green, and the green looks great too, but it's, I don't know if it looks as good as that white prism color. Uh, green is a, is a new old color, it hasn't been released for a Galaxy phone in a while, and um, it just looks, you know, almost uh, sea green, so it looks really, really nice. Also, we have this blue color on the left here, which is supposed to be released after the phone is um, release so short time after probably a month or two I would assume maybe more they would release this blue color and the blue color looks like it changes as well as you see at the bottom it almost turns into a white yellow maybe orange in there as well but that's an awesome looking color too for Samsung and then the front of the phone for the Galaxy S10 plus you see the two cameras in the right some news outlets are complaining that they're trying to hide it because they're using a darker color at the top of this wallpaper but uh, very cool looking phone I'm gonna see if that camera bothers me or not. I mean, notches I, I thought were gonna bother me, but you kind of get used to it after a while, so I'm assuming this will be the same. It is definitely Galaxy season, S series season right now, and we're deep into it, and we have a lot of stories today, so let's get right into it. First story of the day is about the Galaxy S10. E, also known as the Galaxy S10 Lite. Now, yesterday we showed off some variations of what the Galaxy S10, S10 Plus will look like in official renders. Today, we have the official renders of the S10e, and it is a flat phone, so you're not gonna get any curve to the display, so if you wanna put on a glass protector, and uh, it's gonna work perfectly for that, also because of the fact that the fingerprint sensor is on the side where the power button is, rather than underneath the display, but just look-wise, I personally think it looks kind of dated in a way. Um, the curve definitely adds a, a flair to it, a different kind of like modern uh, look to it. And this kind of just looks kind of flat and boring. And uh, But I do like the colors, especially the green, and the white prism. Next up is about the Galaxy S10 line of phones, ever be the S10e, S10, S10 Plus, whatever variation that you're going to get. It's going to have a headphone jack. I don't know why, I just saw Sam Mobile posted an article about it, but if there's any confusion of the new phones having a headphone jack or not, they definitely do. This is an S10 Plus case and it has the headphone jack input. And regardless, it's gonna have it. They would, there would have been such a huge fuss about it not having it, that it definitely has it on all variations. I can confirm that. And the last story of the day is about the colors that each line of Galaxy S10 will get, and also new updated pricing. Some of the pricing is very familiar, but we now have the pricing for the ultimate version of the S10 line of phone. So as you can see, it's pretty easy to follow right here, but you'll have the S10e, which will come in uh, six gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of storage. You're gonna get it in prism black, prism green, pearl white, uh, and also canary yellow, and then blue later on. As for the S10, you're gonna get uh, six, uh, six gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of storage, or eight gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of storage, prism black, prism green, pearl white, and blue. S10 Plus is going to have the same uh, storage configurations and RAM configurations as the S10, um, but it will, and also have the same exact colors as well. I heard the blues are gonna come out a little bit later for at least probably in America, so just be forewarned about that. You might not be able to get blue for those line of phones. And then the S10 Plus, which is the, the, the bigger ultimate one, the 12 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte of storage, is gonna come in, and instead of having it like a glass back, it's gonna come in ceramic white and, or ceramic black. I've heard rumors that it's only gonna come in ceramic black, so ceramic white might not be right, but per this latest leak, it does come in ceramic white. And then as for pricing, 
these are the pricing. They'll be pretty high, but regardless, uh, don't shoot the messenger. So you see the S10e, 850 bucks, which is for a, a quote unquote lesser phone, it's still pretty expensive. Uh, for the S10 6 and 128, you're gonna get it for $1,030. For the 8 and 5, 12 gigabyte, you're gonna get for 1310 bucks. That's already more expensive than the regular Note 9. Uh, and then you're looking at the same thing for the 6 and 128 on the S10 Plus, 1140, so it's even more expensive. And then the 8 and 5, 12, 1430 bucks. And then for the ultimate version, this is gonna be the newest price we're receiving for the 12 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte of storage, $1,710 for a phone. Now it kind of makes you wonder, is it even worth it at that point to get it over the Galaxy Note 9? Because the Galaxy Note 9 retails for $1249, it has eight gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of storage, and then you look at something like the S10 and S10 Plus that also has eight gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of storage, but it's basically $100 or $200 more depending upon which one you get versus the Galaxy Note 9. Now I know the Galaxy S10 is gonna have, most likely, and it should, better cameras, it does have a faster processor. Um, it has an in-display fingerprint sensor. Those three things right there are upgraded, you know, just on a surface level. Maybe there's gonna be some more stuff, but just, and it doesn't have an S Pen. Maybe you live and die by the S Pen, you won't want the S10, but it's kind of scary where these prices are going. Let's get into the news. The first story of the day is about the Galaxy S10 line of phones passing through the FCC here in America. And it tells us a little bit about the phone that we kind of knew and confirmed them th some things as well and some other things that we may have questioned. So first off, the radios, the Samsung Pay, meaning MST, and some other things as well are exactly the same as the Galaxy S line, S9 phone uh, in general. So if you wanted, you know, in terms of NFC and Bluetooth and like I said, MST, which is for Samsung Pay, all that stuff is in there and it matches what you get with the Galaxy S9. The other big thing that are uh, confirmed in here that were rumors before is that uh, Samsung Galaxy S10 line of phones will support Wi-Fi 6, which is uh, basically uh, the fastest Wi-Fi available right now. A lot of routers don't have this even in it, I know my router doesn't. Um, so if you want the fastest Wi-Fi, which is again, Wi-Fi 6, it will be supported in the Galaxy S10 line of phones. The other one is reverse wireless charging, which means you can put a phone on the back of another phone. So you grab, say, a Pixel phone, Pixel 3 phone, and then put it on the back of a Galaxy S10 phone. The Galaxy S10 phone will charge that phone. So again, reverse wireless charging. I can't personally see myself getting super excited and using the reverse wireless charging. I just... I think it's more of a gimmick, but it's nice to see that. The Wi-Fi 6 is very cool. Uh, once I get a router that can support it, I'll be excited for that one as well. And the last story of the day comes from Ice Universe. He put out a tweet, and we knew this already based off of rumors and things, but he's showing it in an actual screenshot with the Galaxy S10 being thinner, but with a bigger battery than the Galaxy S9. And you can see from these photos that the Galaxy S9 is just slightly thinner at 7.8 millimeters thick versus 8.5 on the S9 Plus. So that's a, it's a fair amount, it's 0.7 millimeters thicker. And the battery is bigger, like I said, on the S10 Plus, 4,100 milliamps versus 3,500 milliamps. Come on, say it, I know you're going to. Where's the 5,000 milliamp? Battery. It's not in the Galaxy S10 Plus line of phones, so you're gonna have to stick with the 4100 milliamp, which is still, at least it's 100 milliamps bigger than the Galaxy Note 9, and the Note 9 in general, at least from what you guys say and what the rest of the world says, maybe not, not with what I get, but it has really, really amazing battery life, and uh, you're gonna get that, you should get even better battery life with the Galaxy S10 Plus because of the customizations and optimizations within the new processor with that Snapdragon 855. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to subscribe to new videos every single day. My question out to you guys is, would you have been fine with the phone, the Galaxy S10 Plus, maybe being the same thickness as the Galaxy S9 Plus, but maybe having a 5,000 milliamp battery? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you down the road. Peace.